of Revelation, we will praise God forever, for there stood a lamb. Let's pray together. Father, as we talk again about the very heart of Revelation, making a stand, taking a stand for Jesus, we pray that you will impress our minds personally through your Holy Spirit to take a stand for you. Help us hold nothing back from that full commitment to Jesus. Now come, speak to us through your word. Convict us by your spirit and grant to us a sense of your power in this meeting. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. My topic tonight is how to bear the past, the secret of a whole new life. When you look at the book of Revelation, the great theme of Revelation is that Jesus wins and Satan loses. Amen. Wherever you start in the book of Revelation, it always ends with the triumph of Jesus, with the victory of Jesus. Jesus has never had a battle with the enemy and lost yet. Amen. And because of that, the devil has no power over you. Amen. Jesus is the victorious Lord in the book of Revelation. Now in the book of Revelation, there are some amazing symbols. In the book of Revelation, Jesus is mentioned as the lamb 27 times. And he fights against a dragon. Now imagine this scene in your mind. Here is a dragon. Tall, large, iron claws. I don't know, dragons have iron claws? <laughs> Breathing out fire. I don't know, dragons breathe out fire. But here's this huge dragon. And he comes and there's this little lamb. And he approaches the lamb. From a human perspective, who's going to win? The dragon. the dragon. But in the book of Revelation, who wins? Jesus wins. So in spite of our weakness, in spite of our frailty, in spite of the persecution on God's people down through the ages, the lamb triumphs over the dragon. Now the Bible says, speaking about the last days of earth's history, speaking about a confederation, a union of church and state, the Bible says these, that is the powers of earth united with the powers of hell, these will make war with the lamb. This is the last battle in the drama of the ages. This is the final conflict in the drama. These will make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb will overcome them. What will the Lamb do, everybody? Overcome. overcome them. The powers of church and state unite. The powers of hell are marshaled against God's people. But the Bible says the Lamb will overcome them. And then it says, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and those that are with him. I want to be with him, don't you? Yes. Those that are with him are called. Jesus calls us to salvation. We never come to Christ without him calling us. We never come to Jesus without him first coming to us. Before we ever turn to Jesus, he's working on our hearts through his Holy Spirit. He's bringing conviction to our minds, to the Spirit. He is calling us, those who are called and are chosen. He calls us to salvation. He chooses us for service, and he invites us to be what, everybody? Faithful. The book of Revelation is a clarion call to take a stand. In the book of Revelation, there can be no middle ground. There are no closet Christians. There are no silent Christians in the book of Revelation. We live in a generation of soft-hearted Christianity of complacent, apathetic Christianity, where many will not take an open stand for their faith. Did you remember, maybe you, you didn't read it, but when I read the story, it quite fascinated me. There was a young college student who wanted to earn extra money in the summertime. He was paying tuition at a Christian college. He was going to a Christian college, wanted to earn money. And one of the ways that was offered, one of the job offers for college students, was to come up to Canada and chop trees down and work in a lumber camp. He applied for the job and was accepted. But his college classmate friend said, you made a great mistake. Sure, you'll make a lot of money, but these lumberjacks are cursing, swearing, drinking, immoral men, and when they find out you're a Christian, they're going to eat you up. When they find out you're a Christian, they're going to tear you apart. 
When they find out you're a Christian, there's, uh, you're going to be brutalized all summer. So he went up and worked all summer in the camp. Came back, had a lot of money, and they said to him, well, how did you do? I did great, man. I just did great. No problems at all. I did great. How did you ever survive as a Christian? It was easy. I made sure that nobody ever found out that I was a Christian. <laughs> the book of Revelation calls us to make a decision. It calls us to take a stand. It calls us to stand with the great men and women of faith down through the ages that were called, that were chosen, and that are faithful. Down through the ages, God has had a group of people that in spite of oppression and persecution and difficulty and hardship, have been faithful to Him. As I've traveled the world, one of my favorite places is Cappadocia in Turkey. It was here that many Christians in this remote area found shelter and refuge during great times of persecution. Rather than surrender their faith, they fled their homes. At times, their homes were burned. At times, many of these Christians were martyred. But many of them, by the thousands, came here. And in the soft tundra of rock, they cut out their homes and they lived here. This was a place of refuge for the persecuted, particularly during the Muslim invasions, as the Muslims came down persecuting Christians in this part of Turkey. This was an asylum for the hunted. And you can see many of their homes are carved into the rock. But when the persecutions became incredibly fierce, and there was death and dying everywhere, these Bible-believing Christians built underground cities. There were as many as 8,000, 10,000 people living in these underground cities. There was a network of these underground cities, and uh, they were tied together through narrow corridors. And when our group was there, and I've been there many times, I've said to my group, it's an experience of a lifetime. Let's go down as deep as we can in the underground cities. Now, if you have claustrophobia, this is not for you. And so we began, I took my group, and we began climbing down one story, two stories, three stories, and it's amazing. You can see kitchens and still the darkened smoke on the ceiling where these bands of Christians prepared their food. You can see places where they actually kept their animals underground. You can go down deeper and see the little homes where the families lived. This is my daughter on the left, Rebecca, my wife on the right, and we are eight stories down in this cave. Now, we gathered our group, and as I opened the Bible, we talked about faith, we talked about courage, we talked about the people that had lived here, some of them for six months, some of them for nine months, some of them for years. And we sang, a mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. Here were men and women who had the moral courage not to compromise their faith. Here were men and women that said, we will stand for the right in the name of Jesus through the power of Christ, through the grace of Christ. We will be faithful to the living Christ. Now, one of the amazing things here was this. Cut out of rock, cut out of this rock, there were baptistries where these ancient believers, baptized by immersion, those that would take a courageous stand for Christ, they were willing to publicly testify of their faith. 